everybody, welcome to the Black Sheep Props channel. I'm Steve and I'm here to teach you the tips, tools, techniques, and materials for building your very own super cool EVA foam props. Now in our last episode, Making an EVA Foam World of Warcraft Axe Part 2, you saw us complete the whole build. Tons of work, but totally doable and totally easy, and it turned out perfect. Which means, in this episode, Making an EVA Foam World of Warcraft Axe Part 3, it's time for the magic. It's time to seal it and paint it. That's right, check that out, man. We're gonna make this thing look like stone and black metal and bone and the red leather wrap. And uh, you've seen us do this before. We got two or three tones going on in every area to give it that look. And uh, we're gonna dirty it up a little bit too to weather it, make it look kind of stained up. Um, super easy stuff. Uh, so, if you're ready to hit it, let's make something. All right, we're out at the spray stand. We're going to start coating our jam and axe with our Plasti Dip. And you know what we always say, even if you're outside in a well-ventilated area, do not spray without your respirator. All right, there we go. Coated all over the place with our black Plasti Dip. Pretty jamming. All right, we're just gonna leave it alone. We're gonna set it off to the side. We're gonna let it dry. And uh, then we're gonna start painting it. Okay, now we're gonna begin painting. This should be pretty easy. We're gonna come in with our sponge brush and we're gonna start doing all the stone pieces. And we're gonna come in and start that with our medium gray. Okay, now it doesn't matter if we hit it on all these other pieces because we're going to be painting those next. Alright, that's it. You just keep tapping all around the piece. We're going to do this blade and the piece at the bottom. All right, there we go. Now, as you can tell, because we're using the sponge brush, it leaves kind of a little bit of darkness in all the crevices, which is exactly the look we're going for. All right, all right there we go. We've got all around this area on the bottom. We've got our two blades. We've got on the top of the blades, down underneath. Now we're gonna come in with a brush where we couldn't reach with the sponge, way down underneath. down in some of these little cavities down here, but we're not going to completely fill it in. Alright, there we go. Looks like we're pretty much covered everywhere. Let's do the same thing on this side now. Okay, now we're not worried about filling it in completely, because like I said, we want some of the black to kind of show through so it has a little bit of a weathered feel. All right, there's one coat of our medium gray all the way around all the spots on our blade, all the way around our handle piece. Perfect. Okay, now we're gonna come in with our wrought iron. All right, now we're gonna use three different tones of gray to accomplish our stone look. Now you've seen us do this before. Three tones, dark, medium, and light. So we went ahead and we've got the, the medium layer down with our medium gray. 
Now we're gonna come in with our darker gray and we're gonna kind of make it blotchy, all right? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna get some on the end of our brush. We're going to get it fairly dry. Then we're gonna come in hit around in a bunch of areas, kind of random, like that. See what we're doing? We're just breaking it up so it's not, so it's not the super solid medium gray, all right? We wanna get in here. All right, there we go, check out. Look at the difference. There it is, solid gray. There it is, getting kind of blotchy with our wrought iron. All right, there it is with just the medium gray. And then when you flip it over, look at that. That is cool. We're getting dark. Just take your time, go around the whole set of stone blades, breaking up your medium gray with the wrought iron. Nice, see that? We've got the, the wrought iron darkening up parts of it. We've got dark and light. All right, there we go, same thing there. Took our medium gray, broke it up by just blotching around our wrought iron. Check that out. It's still wet, when it dries, you'll be able to really see the subtle change. I think you can already see it there, look at that. Start. Okay, now we have our two tones in here, medium and wrought iron. Now we're gonna come in with our steel gray, which is a really light gray. Get our brush pretty darn dry, and we're gonna just tap around. See that? Starting to break it up a little bit. All right, now we make sure that we hit on all the edges. Wow, that is a great look. There it is with just the two tones on it, and there it is with the white added. Well, that's actually not white, it's steel gray, which is almost white, look at that. Now we've got three tones on there, and it's kind of looking like stone. All right, and we can get a little bit on our brush, and we can come in and we can hit around some of the edges. See that? Right along the edge, just like that. Wow. We hit it around these edges, around the edges of our gashes. All right, now we're just gonna take our time. We're gonna do the rest of the blades and we're gonna do this area down here at the bottom. Three tones. Beautiful. Looking good, get the white edges on there. All right, now we're gonna come in with our satin black and we are going to paint the black area. Even though we have Plastidip black on there, it's not quite as powerful as black paint. Nothing artistic about this. You're just filling it in. Don't need any skill whatsoever. Just be careful not to hit your gray part, of course. That's it. Look at that. Super rich black. Holy smokes. All right, just keep going. And then we just take our time right here where it comes up against the, the gray and we cut in nice and careful like that. Real easy. Just take your time, be careful. You don't need to mask anything off.
Beautiful. Let's keep going. Wow, that's rich black. Golly. Okay, now the same way we did three tones in here, we're going to do a couple tones in the black as well. Okay, we just don't want it solid black. We're going to come in with our wrought iron. The same tapping around in sections, just like we did before. Look. We're going to come in around the edge. See that? How we've got our tone changing now. We've got our black and then we've got our wrought iron that brings in like a slightly lighter gray just to have a tone change. All right now we're going to do that all around the black areas here and here. We've got our wrought iron dabbed all around the black parts just to change the tone up a little bit. Look at that. That is pretty cool. Right here around the edges, a little bit in the middle. Just enough. Alright, now we're coming back in with our medium gray. Alright, now we're going to come around and we're going to hit... on the edges. Like that. There you go, you just tap it real light, it picks up on the edge. Wow, really nice. And then we just break up some areas in the middle. Alright, see that in there? Just a little bit in there just to break it up immediately once you start putting the second tone in it really starts coming together really cool really right now what we're gonna do while we have our paint out is we're gonna take our brush hit some like that. See that? Hitting around the edge right there. Just like that. See that? Nice. Nice slight edge around the inside of our little cutout areas there. Alright, now we're going to come in, do the same thing down here, get our edges. That is really nice. Three tones. There we go. We just pulled out a couple really stronger spots. There it is. All right. Now we're going to come in with our silver now we're not going to go all the way down into the crevice because we want to leave black down in the bottom that's it just like that do all the rest of them all right there we go silver rivets on both sides perfect okay now we're going to do our wrap we're going to do it with red but we're going to All right, there we go. That's one layer of our red down. And then, all right, now we're going to try to mix up a color for our bone color. All right, we're going to have to experiment here. We're going to come in with our honeycomb. All right, now let's come in with a little bit of white. All right, that's pretty light. But what we need is I think it needs a tiny little bit of yellow in it. 
Let's get a little bit in there like that. Let's see what that does. A little bit more. Pretty close. A little bit more. That is not bad for a bone color. All right, pretty cool. Okay, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna come in and create a mud wash. We're gonna come in with our brown, right there, and just a little tiny bit of black, like that. Pour a little bit of water in there. Get this end here. The color didn't look exactly right. It was close, but it's really hard to fake bone. But man, we just came in with that simple mud wash and that was just enough, man. Just enough to dirty it up. Look at that. Wow, is that cool. We might even be able to come in and Let's do another layer. Wow, I'm digging that. All right, there we go. Look at that. Got a little bit. All right, there it is. Wow. All right, now while we have all this out, a little black in there. Oh yeah, look at that. That's definitely darker mud right there. Alright, there you go. Check that out, man. Look at that nice dirty bone at the top and the bottom from our mud wash on both sides of it. Look at that. Nice and cruddy. And our handle, we just sooted up our handle a little bit there. Got it kind of grimy in the corner and a little bit stained up. And uh, a little spot there. That's pretty much it. It's about the size of it. Uh, with that last mud washing detail, that brings our World of Warcraft axe to a close. Yeah! There you go. Perfect! Easy techniques, too. You saw how easy this was. It's just as easy as every paint job we've done. Um, no masking off, really. Just uh, getting in there with a the brush and doing it. We got to get sloppy with the mud wash, so our bones looking like bone, and uh, our some, our uh, stone is looking like stone because of the three tones in there. Really cool stuff, and uh, one of my favorite details, the scratching, getting on there afterwards and scratching up the edges and stuff. Love it. Um, so that concludes making an EVA foam World of Warcraft axe part three. 
Hope you liked it. If you did, give us a like, share us with a friend, and subscribe to this channel. And together we're going to go step by step through a lot more super cool builds so that you get the props you deserve. Thanks for coming. See you next time.